Praise God and good morning to everyone. I'm telling you, sometimes uh, the things that we endure in order to do what God has called us to do sometimes means we have to get in the ring and come out swinging. I want to say great Saturday morning to everyone that's tuned in and listening. You are listening to The Intentional Pastor, Vernice Green, and I am here with you to bring intentional inspiration. We've got started due to um, some technical difficulties a little bit later than we were expecting, but nevertheless, we know that our God is great. And we will continue to be obedient to that that God has called us to do because it is the reason that we do the things we do is to bring glory and honor to our great God and King. So I want you all, as you have tuned in, to hear and receive a word from the Lord so that you can be encouraged as you start your Saturday morning. So I'm just super excited to be here. Uh, to talk to you for a few moments, just so that you will know that there is no one greater than our God. And I am so, so very grateful that our God continues to be God, no matter what. So what I want to talk to you about for these next few moments, I want to ask you a question. Are you really yielded? Are you really yielded? Are you really yielded? And so uh, the scripture that I want to use for the foundation of what I want us to talk about this morning, or I want to encourage you this morning, with, is going to start with Jeremiah chapter 18. We'll go over a few other verses of scripture, but this is one that definitely may be familiar, but that may also uh, kind of have some meaning to you. I know it does for me. So let's start with Jeremiah chapter 18, starting at the first verse. And it reads, here it is. The Lord gave another message. And this is, I am reading from the New Living Translation. So if you're a King James person, go back and read it from that particular uh, version of the Bible. There are so many great versions of the Bible. I'm just choosing to use this one this morning. Jeremiah chapter 18, starting at verse 1. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. Verse four, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it. Are y'all listening this morning into a lump of clay again and start it over? Oh, my God. When I think about the question as the Lord proposed it to me, because one thing's for sure, whenever God gives me something, he's asking a question to me first, even if I'm going to propose it to an audience altogether. And that's our question. That is what God is asking us on today. Are you really yielded? Um, it makes me think about yield. And I know that a lot of times you, if you're a driver, if you have a license to drive in whatever part of the world you're in and you come to a yield sign, yield means you slow down and you stop if necessary. I'm going to say that again. To yield means to slow down and to stop if necessary. So here is the thing. A lot of times what people will do is they will ignore the yield sign. They will ignore that warning and they will just keep driving as if the yield sign does not exist. They don't slow down. So if they don't slow down, surely they have no intentions of stopping. We And here's, here's where this fits in with what I just read. So when we, ran, when we read from Jeremiah chapter 18, I want to read the fourth verse again. It says, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. He began to develop 
whatever it was that he had in mind as the potters. He was spinning the clay into whatever shape or what what type of uh, instrument, what vessel he was going to design. It didn't turn out the way he hoped it to. So the scripture goes on to say, so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Uh, I have been to different parts of the world and, and seen potters work. I've also worked with with some some clay myself. Uh, and as a military person, we have what's called arts and craft centers on our military installations, and you can go there. And sometimes some of them have places where you can work with with clay. Though they have those uh, different classes that are available for you to work with clay and and design different types of vessels, whether you're making a vase or if you're making a bowl uh, or if you're making a cup or mug, whatever it is that, that you're designing, sometimes as you're making that thing, do you know sometimes it's not turning out quite the way you expected it to? And so you have the ability because the clay is so pliable and the clay is soft in its texture you can crush it or you can mash it back down um, and then you form it back into a ball and then you begin to lay it back out flat so you can begin to shape it once again into what you were trying to create the first time around. And the reason why I mentioned to you all about that yield sign is that sometimes in our life, when God is directing our steps, because the word of the Lord tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God has put it on the menu that he has already designed the way you should be moving and the direction that you need to go in has already been established. Even before the foundations of the world, God has already ordered the direction that you need to be moving in because uh, there used to be a show when I was much younger and there's probably people that are older than I that are listening to me. Uh, there was a show that came on that says, Father Knows Best. Oh my my God, this is good to me if it's not good to anybody else. The Father in heaven knows what's best for you. The Father in heaven knows what's best for me. That is why we need to ask ourselves, do it occasionally, do it every day if you have to. Are you really yielded? Have you slowed down just enough so that God can get your attention, so that he can warn you about a danger that may be heading your way? Have you slowed down enough so that if you need to do a U-turn and turn around and go back to the house, maybe you forgot something and didn't even realize it. Maybe you forgot uh, your, your security pass so that you can get into that secured area where you work, whatever it is, have you slowed down long enough so that God can get your attention? And listen, as I said, it's to slow down or stop if necessary. The potter in this instance was watching what he was creating and he had to slow down his process and eventually stop so that he could once again mar, crush, or mash down the clay that he had begun to create into a vessel because it was not turning out the way that he had designed it to. Sometimes when we are being created by God himself, there are so many bubbles in the clay. There are so many hiccups and, and, and so many uh, uh, imperfections that God has to literally begin with us again. Am I talking to anybody on today? So prophetically, I want you to understand that this word that is coming into your hearing, understand that when God begins to work with you again, when God begins to make you over again, it's because you are yielded. It's not because you aren't. It's because you are. I'm going to let that sink in. Because God this morning wants us to be yielded. Now, let me read something else. Let me go beyond the fourth verse. Let me read verse five and verse six. Here it is. So it says, after the, this potter starts over with the clay, when it's not being designed into the thing that he had purposed in the first place. Verse six says this, then the Lord gave me this message. This is God talking to Jeremiah or Jeremiah uh, giving a recount of what God said. This is the message he gave me. He said, oh, Israel, 
can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Oh my goodness. Listen. What I have learned through my many years of reading the scriptures and walking this walk, this this journey called salvation, I have learned to place my name in places where God says whoever he's talking to, whether it's King David or uh, whether it's Jeremiah or Isaiah or whoever he may be talking to. So let me show you how this would read. Verse five, if I were to exchange and put my name here. Going into verse 6. Then the Lord gave me this message. Oh, Vernice, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. And so listen, if you wear that name or the people that he was sending out, this message to through the prophet Jeremiah. If you would exchange your name and put your name there, guess what? God is talking to you today and he's asking you, are you really yielded? He's asking me, are you really yielded? Here, I'll prove it to you in more scripture. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 64. You're going to hear me turning pages. I'm still a, a Bible page turner. I love the the feel of the Bible in my hand. I know that we have other means of getting to scripture and and hearing from the Lord, but I still love the feel of the pages in my hand. I love to hear the pages turning and I love to be able to mark off what God is saying. So Isaiah chapter 64 and verse eight, and it says this, and yet, O Lord, You are our father. We are the clay. You and you are the potter. We are formed by your hand. I'm going to read that again. And yet, O Lord, you are our father. Is the heavenly father your father today? I know he's my father. I pray that, that you know him in such an intimate way that you can cry out, Abba, Father, this morning. It says, and yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. We're the ones that can be formed. We're the ones that can be shaped into the, de- de- the divine design that he has in mind from the very beginning. And when it doesn't turn out quite right, are you yielded enough so that he can start over and get you right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Now, I'm going to show you another scripture just in case. I'm going to give you two or three witnesses. Let's go back a few chapters and look at Isaiah 45. We're actually going to kind of go back and, back and forth in some time here. So Isaiah 45, uh, verse 9. And this says, What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Talking about us. What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Guess who's your creator? Do I need to say it? Does a clay pot argue with this master? This is the word, y'all. You can't make this stuff up. I'm reading it scripture out of the word of God. Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it saying, Stop, you're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? In other words, you have something that should not be even, that should not possess the ability to say anything. Say to the thing that's creating it, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what kind of shape I'm supposed to be. You don't know what kind of vessel I'm supposed to be. I need you to shape me like this. I need you to form me like that. No, it says the clay does not do that to the creator. The one that's making it doesn't get told by the thing that's being made. You don't know what you're doing. Oh my God. Ooh, I hope that y'all are getting this. Because when we are yielded, when you and I are yielded, we give up the right to have anything to say about the process that we're going through. Why? Because we are in the potter's hands. We are the clay. He is the potter. And guess what? There should be no talk back. 
We should not be talking back, telling God what to do and how to do. Because he's God. He is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do, how he wants to do it, for how for however long he needs or wants to do it. He is God. He has not ceased in his authority of being both maker and creator of heaven and earth. He is still on the throne, y'all. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad that he is still on the throne? Listen, with everything that's going on around the world right now, we understand the calamities that have befallen and taken place in Ukraine. And my prayers, my heart goes out to those people. But listen, today you and I are still alive. We're still standing. We're not in harm's way, though we are. We have a legion of angels that stand at the ready, at, at our our. our at where we are that guard us day and night, watching over our home and being there when we need them to come and minister to us. Oh my God. Is anybody else excited this morning besides me? Hallelujah. So we don't tell God what to do. We've been chosen by him to be shaped into the vessel that he's going to use because he does what he wants to do. Of course, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at some other things, but I want you to understand this this morning. There is a place, a purpose, and a position for you that God has for He has for you and I. There's a place, a purpose, and a position God has for each of us. But you know what? The manifestation of any of that, whether it's the place, the purpose, the position, it's, you know, we're not going to see the manifestation of it because it's based on our obedience. I asked the question, are you yielded? Do you know just because a yield sign is not a stop sign, it still needs to be obeyed? Oh, oh, hello. If you can't say amen, an ouch right there will do. Too many people seem like they practically speed up instead of slowing down when they're getting to a yield sign. If you go out into traffic after blowing past a yield sign, there might be an 18-wheeler waiting on the other side that you didn't see that comes through on your blind side. And now we may have a tragedy. As, as they would say, somebody has to clean you up off the sidewalk. I don't want anything to happen to you as you're on your journey of where God is taking you. Because I know that after this morning, you're going to be yielded. You're not only going to ask yourself the question, but you're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you need to slow down and stop if necessary. Because God has something great, marvelous, and magnificent on the horizon for you. But you have got to be yielded. You have got to walk and see yourself uh, obeying God to the fullest, to the letter, so that you don't miss anything that he has for you. You want to be in the right place at the right time. You want to be doing the right thing that God has purposed just for you. And you want to be in position, stay in position. The word of God tells us having done all to stand, stand there for, just stand there. You, if you don't need to be doing anything, just stand there, stand there with the praise on your lips and with praise in your heart and begin to magnify the God of your salvation on today. And just know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he's spoken a thing, surely he will bring it to pass. Are you yielded on today? You all know that as I bring the inspirational to you, this is by intentional design. Inspiration does inspire you, but inspiration sometimes has to challenge you because we may just be off just a little bit. And God uses this time that we spend together to get us back on track. My God, I could just run and shout and dance right now because this is something, a place where we've begun 2022. It's still early in the year, but we're steady blowing past the yield signs. We're not slowing down. We're not taking time to stop. Sometimes you got to check in. In the military, we would call it checking in. If we would be on a field exercise or even when we've gone to combat. Yes, I've gone to combat. You got to do a check-in. So you got to make sure 
that everything is in great operating condition, that your, your communication abilities doesn't go down so that you're able to check in with the people that are waiting to hear from you so that they know that you're all right. Are you yielded on today? I keep coming back to that because God needs us to be yielded. He needs that. He absolutely needs us to be yielded. He needs you to yield. He needs me to yield. So listen, we, we, I, I want to read something else into your hearing. We're not done yet. I love the word of God. I hope this is inspiring somebody this morning. Hallelujah. So let's go over to 2 Timothy. Let's go over to Paul's protege. The brother evangelist apostle, the one, the only Paul. And let's look at this second letter to Timothy. If I can get my pages to be unstuck. Here we go. Hallelujah. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two. Here we go. Um, and I'm going to read this one verse of scripture. In a wealthy home, verse 20, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 says, In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones for everyday use. I'm going to read verse 20, 21 as well. If you keep yourself pure, if you keep yourself yielded, if you keep yourself obedient, uh-oh, <laughs> there it is. You will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Let me kind of do a little deep dive in here. And let me explain some something to you so that you will know that not only can you be a vessel of honor, and that is what we all strive to be. We strive to be that gold or silver utensil. But let me tell you how int int intricate a design of even the everyday use utensils plays in the part and in the heart of God and in the place of, of a believer. Those vessels that I mentioned that have everyday use are used for things that they matter. They matter. Everybody wants that place of honor, but nobody wants the place of everyday use. Ooh, okay, I know I'm going to probably step on some toes, especially after reading that, but I need you all to hear me. So I'm asking the question, are you yielded? Are you yielded enough to hear what I'm about to say? See, an everyday vessel, if you think about in biblical times, when someone came to your home and, and you had prepared a meal because you knew they were coming. And even if you didn't know they were coming and you were prepared to greet them, to have them into your home, there's certain things that you set out. So there's certain things that stayed at the ready. So if you have a, a nice uh, vessel. It might not be as nice looking as the gold or the silver, but you have a, a nice, uh, beautifully decorated bowl that's large enough that has water in it. The water is there, but this particular vessel that has the water in it is so that your guests is so that those that live in the home with you can wash their hands. Ooh, <laughs> hallelujah. You got to have a vessel that people can, can, can dip into and be able to wash and to be able to clean themselves. So you have a vessel that's used for washing your hands. You also have a vessel that has water that you wash your feet. You want to offer those that come into your presence, into your home, the ability to wash their hands and to be able to clean and wash their feet because they had gone and traveled, uh, whether they rode on a vehicle as a horse or a donkey. Maybe they were in, in some type of uh, wagon that was pulled by animals. But anyway, they came in. They were may have been tired. Maybe they had a long journey just to get to you. 
And so you want to offer them from the vessels that get everyday use to be able to wash their hands and their feet. Listen, I'm going to say this. The word of God is a vessel for you. You ought to be getting cleaned and ready for the day every day with the vessel of the word of God. Oh my God, that's good. Your Bible, your electronic device that you swipe across to look at scripture should get everyday use. It ought to be washing your hands so that you don't, you don't uh, find yourself handling unclean things. It ought to wash your feet so that you don't find yourself going into places that you have no business or that you are led of God before you go somewhere. Oh my God, this is good. This is hot off the press this morning, y'all. Are you yielded? Are you truly yielded? Only you know. Only you know. I'm going to leave y'all alone, but we are going to read some more scripture. Come on, let's go over to Romans chapter 12. Woo, ah, my God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Are you yielded? Again, more familiar scripture. More familiar scripture. So look at this. You all have heard this, but this is how you would know if you yielded. Come on. Uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're going to start right at verse 1. And it says, here it is. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Why you give? Why do you yield yourself? Because God has done so much for you and I. That's why we yield. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Woo! I hope y'all ready for what I'm about to say now in verse two. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. I'm going to read that again. Don't copy. I know the word God talks about and be not conformed. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transfer, transform you into a new person. Remember that clay that wasn't turning out quite into the vessel or design that the potter had in mind? He did what? He crushed it. He smashed it back down so he could start over. The word of the Lord tells us right now, but let God transform you. Let God redo you. Let God make you over. Let God click on the switch of transformation in your life into a new person by changing the way you think. <laughs> it says, then you will learn how and know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's good. That's real good. But guess what? I got something else that I want to read out of here to you. And I want you to go with me. So we're going to leave verses 1 and 2. We're going to jump down here to verse 6. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. For doing certain things well. So... If God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gifts are serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility serious. And if you have a gift for giving kindness to others, do it gladly. Now, the reason why I, I read those about the spiritual gifts is because when you're yielded, you're being shaped and making by the potter, by the creator himself, by father God into the vessel that he's going to use. And whatever gift he pours into the vessel that he designs will be utilized for that. And whatever gift he gives you, God, with everything in you, you do it to please the Father. This is, is not for you to be seen, but for him to be seen. The word of God tells us that men, when we're doing something that pleases God, that should point others to God and back to God, that men would see your good works and do what? 
glorify the Father which is in heaven. That's what this thing is about. That's why we need to be yielded. That's why we need to know whose we are in order to really understand who we are. Are you yielded on today? Are you that vessel of honor? But are you also at the same time a vessel of everyday use? We don't want to be so heavenly minded that we're not earthly good. But this scripture tells us we don't want to be so captivated by the world, by things that we do here on earth, that we're no heavenly good. We need balance. When you're yielded, a a yield sign naturally gives you balance. It gives you time to think and react should that become necessary for you to do. So you need to slow down and stop if necessary. You need to be yielded on today so that if God got to, if he has to start over with you, if that is where you are right now and you feel like, God, nothing is happening for me. Maybe you need to yield so God can begin to make you over so that he can get, maybe if you got a problem with gossip, maybe God wants to, he got to start that vessel over. He's got to press and squeeze that, crush it out of you. Maybe you're a complainer. So there are so many things that God wants to do in your life, in my life. But we have got to be yielded. It's got to be God's way. It can't be your way and his way. This is not Burger King. (laughs) We don't get to have it any way we want it. When we say we're yielded, when we say, yes, Lord, Let our yes be yes and let our no be no. God said, I would that you would be hot or cold. Either tell me yes or tell me no. But we don't need to give God a maybe. We don't need to be one foot in, one foot out. Can't be lukewarm. He said, I'll spew you or I will spit you. I will remove you from my mouth. No, but I don't like lukewarm coffee and I don't like warm food. When my food, that's why you will hear, you all feel free to use this. When you go to a restaurant and when the food, uh, you order it. So. I I would tell you, I would suggest, (laughs) don't wait till you get the food back and then say it's not hot enough. When you order your food, let them know you want it Japanese style. And what that means is you want your food hot. When it comes to you, you want to see the steam coming from them uh, vegetables. You want to see the steam rising up from from your chicken or your steak or your fish. You want to see that there is a temperature that you desire in order for you to eat and enjoy your meal. So that one was for free. That one was for free. But I am just so excited that I could spend this this uh, short amount of time with you based off of the time that we were able to get started. But nevertheless, this word had to go forth because God has that question. Are you yielded? Are you yielded? And we're going to be talking about that some more. Um, in, in the, in the very near future. So, uh, I would tell you to table it, but I would tell you, uh, maybe put it on the shelf or table it if you like. I would prefer a table because usually, you know, people go to tables quite often. But I, w- I want you all to know that God has something very specific and on purpose just for you. He has, as I mentioned, that place, that purpose and the position that he's trying to place you in. You can be a vessel of honor and you can be a a vessel of everyday use. And also in those scriptures, when you go and you read it, especially in the King James Version, it talks about vessels of dishonor. But the dishonor are the everyday uses. It's not as much about the word dishonor as it is about having an everyday use. Who wants to be a vessel that somebody washes their hands in or that's used to, to clean feet that have traveled for an extended period of time as a soldier being in places of harm's way the one thing that I used to be so grateful for and for those of you that may not have ever experienced the military for women uh, we we have to prove ourselves over and over again to show the men that we can take care of ourselves that we can do uh, I don't want to say the exact same things. I don't care to do the exact same thing things men do because my body is not made or designed for it. But trust me, I'm paying for it now. But hindsight is twenty twenty. But on today, we have to be yielded. And so to be able to get to a place, to be able to remove my boots, 
massage my feet, and yes, even wash them. Because the one thing about in the military, my dad told me this before I went in, into the military. He always told me, he said, remember to take very good care of your feet. That was advice from my father who served in Vietnam. He says, remember to take very good care of your feet. And if you think about it, when you stand up, the thing that bears the entire weight from your head to your feet is your feet. Your feet carry around however much you weigh. Your feet bears the weight of everything you do. And when you realize and read the word of God, Jesus walked everywhere. He was always walking. He was always on the go. And he did it by foot. Listen, I want you to consider throughout the rest of this week till we meet again next week. Are you yielded? Are you yielded to the point to where when God needs to get with you and say, we need to do something different? Because what, what's happening right now is we, we need to begin again in some areas in your life. As I mentioned, it may be gossiping, maybe spending too much money, uh, whatever the issue is or concern, yield yourself on today. Yield yourself on today. And ask, ask the Father. Ask Him what I asked you. Father, am I yielded? Am I truly in a position where I slow down when I need to and literally stop so that I can get my next set of instructions so that I can move in the direction that you're telling me to? Or if I need to make a U-turn, just turn around all together? Are you yielded? Listen, as is my custom, I want to pray before I end this broadcast I want to pray for those that don't have a relationship. You may be listening to me and you have never had a relationship uh, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you to have that is an amazing, amazing thing. You want to have a relationship with Jesus. Why? He loves you. He sacrificed everything for you. I want to talk to the backslider. You know what it's like to be in this place called salvation, to be on this journey. And you've chose to walk away from what God has for you to do. Because maybe the journey seems a little tedious, but I want to tell you, it is so worth it to stick and stay with God. And maybe you are a believer. And as I asked the question, it has pricked your heart to say, hmm, I need to work on this thing called being yielded. Father, we thank you. We magnify you. And we give your name the praise. I, I pray, I bring to you right now, Father God, those that are listening, wherever they may be listening to around the world that they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior God. And it's as simple as an ABC, that they need to accept the, the finished work of Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, being buried and raised the third day. They need to believe that in their heart and they need to make a confession with their mouth. And they need to say, Father, I realize the error of my ways of not having Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Come in and save me. Deliver me from my way of being a sinner that's lost and save me send people into my life to help me live this life called salvation and it's in jesus name that we pray this and i pray for you as you pray for yourself as you have accepted this call into salvation i say welcome to the family welcome to the kingdom of god and for the backslider father god that man that woman that has known you and has decided to turn and walk away God, they're like the prodigal son returning home and you see them afar off and you don't even give them a chance to come and, and to explain themselves as to why they did what they did, what their reasons were. You just have been after them and you're so, so glad that they're home. I'm glad you're home, my brother, my sister. So I say, welcome home. Welcome back to being the vessel that God has called you to do so that you can reach others and bring them into this thing called salvation. And so for those of you that are listening, I pray on today that the spirit of the living God would prick your heart and would cause you to, to ask yourself throughout the day, maybe throughout the week, maybe even throughout the rest of this month of March, am I yielded? Have I truly taken time to allow God to do with me whatever it is that he desires to do? And so Father, bless these, your people, may the favor of God go with them, before them, and travel in every place that they find themselves in, that they would have open door and opportunity to see you manifest yourself in any and every kind of way. 
That is my prayer. So we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Listen, this has been Intentional Inspiration with the Intentional Pastor Vernice Green. And I want you to know that you and Jesus, no matter what the situation is, you guys are a majority and you are a winner on today. So don't forget that until we meet again, I want you all to be blessed and to be highly favored by the Lord. Ask yourself, are you yielded?